Honorable Education Minister, His Excellency Dr. Yao Osechu Michiao, a very fine educationist. I personally, I know you and I know what you can do. Honorable, as your tenor, as the Minister of Education, ye be be twenty and famoding. Honorable, then I make a one. I personally don't have anything against the Rastafarians. However, I do not like the way they are handling the event at all. I don't like the way the parents are going about it. And your own, own person over this school, right? so I don't want to go to school. However, honorable, I'm pleading on behalf of the girl child. Honorable, your education and DNA come. GES should look into it. I brought you an hour. I brought you an hour. And they're very brilliant children. Please, our hair as black women is our beauty, is our power. And the patrol, let's empower the girl child. All right, I was saying for a fresh as nigger and your question on GES was say it's ringing in the tits to a man. Aye, ni muniyam sheno ma, ni muniyam aye na ituni soso kahun egutsi soa. Omuti miye fe pa anti munge na muniyam hun bibi. Sasa miya hun abranti ya wako achimota school arrest anti yasiya maningui. Ena actress Lydia Forsen so akasa fahun, wakasa bebre ya fahun wano akasa kura. Ufra manone ebedru gana ha ituni inti wako school yechaye wakasa fahun nonso sohun. Ena ni pa bebre na actressa ewo rules and regulations. In the world, we did so. And the lady actually said, "Rules and regulations, no. It was not created by God. It is not created here. Now, for instance, the rules and regulations, so law, so and then they bring you this, so no Ghana, and they are there. They are tired, they are tired. That's what the ABC, young couple, be a. In the normal, who the entire, it was a year change, change, change. We see, and the Rastafarian home sent some in a wakasa for home. Young couple, new couple video, no Emra. Um, for a couple of days now. A student was refused entry into Achimota school because um, he had, you know, dreadlocks, and you know, it sparked, you know, a social media uproar and debates, and you know, it's been going on and on and on. Um, this is not the first time I've spoken on this topic. If you follow me, you know it's something I'm extremely passionate about. Um, people have very strong, you know, opinions about it, and. I am very emotional about it, um, but I would like to approach this with reason um, because I, I feel like when there are so many strong opinions, you know, a lot gets lost in there and it becomes very muddy. So again, I've, I've had this conversation before online and, you know, even from people who have experienced this and didn't appreciate it you know where the, the, the opinions are sometimes scary but i'm also learning that a lot of us are shaped by our experiences our own prejudice um where we've been in life and it comes into the way we have conversations about certain things but the first thing i would like to say is so what I'm going to do is try and list all the reasons why people have been against allowing students to wear their natural hairstyles um, in schools and give you my counterpoints. And hopefully we can all learn something or learn from each other. I'm always willing to listen to what, you know, the other party has to say. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is rules and regulations. A lot of people in most of their arguments have been very strong on, you know, rules and regulations. You know, there are rules and regulations of every society, of every institution, um, you know, uh, rules and regulations. And, you know, if you're not willing to follow these rules, you should not. That's just the way it is. But I'd like you to understand that rules and regulations were not created by God. They are written by man. And if something is written by man, it is subject to change and is subject to be challenged. Um, human beings continue to evolve. And as we evolve, our rules, regulations, everything should suit the times that we are in. Right? So we need to move away from that idea that if something is a law it is set in stone and it cannot be changed or it cannot be challenged because it can because if you look at the um, the history of man 
we have come a long way once upon a time women could not vote and there were rules to justify why women should not vote we are allowed to vote because people challenge these rules at that point the people who made these rules believed that it was reasonable and it made sense and it may have i don't know i was not there but people challenged it because as we were evolving it no longer made any sense once upon a time black people were not allowed to share the same toilet restaurants or buses with white people it took people fighting for inclusion and even at that we continue to fight do you understand and at that point there were rules regulations laws that justified all of this so you cannot come and tell me that just because something is a law or it is a rule it is so set in stone that it cannot be challenged especially as we evolve as human beings if we were not allowed to challenge these things we wouldn't be where we are and to people who say well when does it end if you allow one person another person will come i don't know it would it will not end in our lifetime because we continue to evolve i was telling a friend of mine how many years ago spaghetti i remember when spaghetti strap came and it was so scandalous and everybody was making so much noise about it now it's like what's the big deal there are people who say you know well it doesn't mean it is right look people will continue to challenge rules regulations they will win some they will lose some right now in some schools there are people who are challenging why should we wear uniforms as ridiculous as it may sound to you if people are able to present reasonable arguments and whatever they do does not hurt or interfere with who they are and other people it can be challenged do you get what i mean so at some point someone probably came up with this and thought it was a brilliant idea and it probably solved a problem but if it no longer solves anything and if anything it hinders progress productivity then it must be looked at so on the rules and regulation i feel like i've said it so many times and now it is subject to change and it will not stop in our time because we continue to evolve and change you know where <laughs> at some point in our life people thought to argue that the earth was flat and if you believe that the earth was round there was something very wrong with you um but we have evolved to the point where now when you say the world is flat everybody's gonna look at you like you're crazy do you get me so rules um do change the question too is why in all of these arguments um there's been a lot of i've not had enough justification as to why this is important why it is important for people to wear their hair a certain way especially in schools um a couple of years ago when i posted a video about this subject a lot of people came in the comments to talk about one um hair getting especially girls to wear their hair a certain way in school cost money um it made them look too grown and when they looked too good they became too attractive it distracted their books and all of these things none of these um arguments make any sense one hair is part of your hygiene hair care is part of just as you know how to bath and brush your teeth right caring for your hair is an equal part of good hygiene Whenever we talk about hairstyle, people are so fixated in weave on, rasta, you know, all the fancy hairstyles. When <laughs> they are just pony, just twisting your hair, just braiding with, you know, the 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 African thread. Do you get me? 
it is not about wearing fancy hairstyles you should know how to care for your hair on your own because once upon a time there were not even saloons right but a lot of people are not even taught basic hair care as part of personal hygiene and that's why and i have nothing wrong with weaves or braids or anything but for us for some people when they wear their hair even in protective style they don't even know how to care for it it smells they don't know they have to shampoo it because they've not been taught personal hygiene now people say it's very distracting when it comes to your education also false because if you look at all the international schools and other developed countries people are wearing their hair exactly how they want it and they are far more advanced than us you know um some of these international school unfortunately where kids are allowed to express themselves more and embrace their identity are more confident so how is it that they're able to keep the hairstyles they have and still perform better than schools where they have all these restrictions on your hair some will say that you know it makes you look too grown how you are more worried about an adult finding a young person attractive than how you are more worried about a young person looking attractive than you are about and why an adult will find a young girl attractive in, in itself is problematic because some of us even with our short hair we we developed at a very early age so it didn't make us less attractive to men so shaving a girl's hair off is not going to make her more or less attractive you know to to men it's not so that argument is false there is no correlation between um, a girl's intelligence and her hair or a boy's intelligence and his hair now with these rules that they put in place it would not be so problematic if there was no discrimination when it came to it let's be honest a lot of us were in schools where we were required to cut our hair but mixed race children and caucasian children were allowed to keep their hair now in certain schools caucasian students were required to cut their hair as well and mixed race students but in a lot of schools the rules change depending on how rich someone was um their background, the country they were coming from, there were no strict, you know, rules. And all that was did was create, you know, discrimination and made people who had shorter hair feel more inferior. I said this story multiple times that when I came to Ghana as a, as a child, my hair was not something I was obsessed over or cared too much about until I was asked to cut it. And I didn't understand, like, why am I, you know, being allowed to cut my hair? But over a period, I came to appreciate, okay, you know what? Everybody has to wear a uniform because I'm coming from America. We don't wear a uniform. But here, everybody has to wear a uniform. Everybody has to cut their hair. What switched for me was going to certain schools where people were allowed to have their hair. And some of these people were black, looked like me, spoke tree, but because their parents from were rich, it was allowed or because they had lived a couple of years in london or in america it was allowed um because they were a little lighter than me it was allowed i've gone to different schools and at every point it changed but one thing that remained constant was constant was privilege i noticed that keeping your hair had become a privilege what that does is plant a seed of insecurity self-doubt you know in an individual to the point that when I finished secondary school, I did have an afro and I would, I didn't want to perm my hair, but I did it because it was a symbol of status. Like, you know, I have arrived. I am, you know, natural hair is for people who are kids or don't have money or, you know, all of these things. Um, a lot of parents have also argued that, you know what, we don't have time to be caring for your hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Now, it's important to know this. I am not advocating that everybody should have long hair. There are some kids who, a friend of mine says, her daughter just said, Mommy, I want you to cut my hair. There's nothing wrong with a child wanting to keep her hair short. Absolutely nothing wrong. The argument is not that it should be an insistent. The argument here is when you take that choice away or you make it seem like it is a status thing or it's a privileged thing, it plants something in someone's head that it affects their entire life. And it is why it translates even into our work environments. There are so many companies that don't allow natural hairstyles. There are so many companies where, again, I need you to understand that I don't have a problem with you wearing your weaves or you perming your hair. And even though I may advocate for natural hair, I also advocate for choice, freedom to wear your hair the way you want to wear it. But it is problematic that even in workplaces, because this, this carries on into our workplace because some of you are saying you know rules regulations schools studying and all of those things but then you come into the workforce and you are not allowed to wear your natural hair you're not allowed to it, it, it you, you can wear weave you can perm your hair you can do all of those things but you can't have natural hair in the workforce in certain places you're not even allowed to have the short hair the short hair that they told you that you need to be more you know focused if you have short hair in certain workplaces it is not permissible so you understand that a lot of these rules are made by it, it just there is no real format because there's no real, sometimes some headmistress can just wake up and because she's in a bad mood or has a problem with somebody decides that this is my rule there is it is so all over the place that I doubt we will be having this conversation if it was set in stone that this is the GES required way for you to keep your hair. But it isn't. Because international schools, and correct me if I'm wrong, but they're all under GES, are allowed to keep their hair the same the way they want. Because I feel like all of these things are subject to the school. So I need to understand where this is coming from, where there's such a fight about hair. And again, it's unfortunate because that's who we are. We are always so focused on all the wrong things. Imagine a brilliant student, someone who might add value to a school, someone who may become an important person in, and, and represent the school well, being being denied an education because of hair. Imagine someone who, um, who can contribute greatly to, to a company, but being denied working there because of hair. And notice that all of this attack is on natural hairstyles, majority. People have mocked Rastafarian. Now there's a new, you know, um, 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 story going around about the fetish priest, and you know, the 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 story spreading around. It's almost like you hear Rastafarian, you hear fetish priest. You are so caught up in your little box that you cannot believe. First of all, Ghana is not a Christian state. Oh. We have other religions it's just that there are some religions that dominate others but just because you know only christianity and islam doesn't mean that they are not traditionalists doesn't mean they are not hindu doesn't mean they are not you know buddhist so if people have freedom of worship and all of these things why can't that liberty be extended to other you know religions and there has been this, you know, comments about, you know, when you go to Rome, go or did you go and build your own schools? You know, again, when you're having these conversations with people, their arguments a lot of times are so baseless. When, they're just throwing arguments all over the place, which is unfortunate because I say, they don't, it's almost like 
you are annoying why should you get away with it now i went to a catholic school but i had a lot of muslim friends there i was not catholic but even though i was required to go to mass on and on sundays i think every two weeks we we're allowed to have protestant service muslims were allowed to pray there are people who went to islam schools islamic schools where they were christian and they were not forced even though they had to abide by certain rules it was not there were certain things were not imposed on them so although we had uh, muslim students who probably come from mass they were also given the freedom right if we live in a society where we say okay only people who belong to a certain sect get to enjoy the benefits of like when a christian builds a school it's only christian that get to benefit when a muslim builds a school it's only muslim when a traditionalist does roads it's only traditionalist that it, it let's apply common sense in our arguments that we live in a diverse world and we have to learn to accommodate everybody within reason so when a conversation comes up even if it makes you uncomfortable be willing to listen to the other party and if the reasons are broken down and it makes sense allow but you don't just discard because this hair thing on the surface it looks like it's just hair to you but you're, you're the same people who have a problem with women bleaching their skin you have a problem with women wearing all these false things because but you don't understand that all our life you've been brought up to almost believe that who you are is not acceptable who you are is not a standard you have to look almost european you, you have to look a certain way for acceptance so you don't have any sense of identity any self-love um or self-worth so it is much deeper than hair when then when your whole life is fixated on trying to look the part it is very derailing and it's unfortunate again that um we are still having these conversations it really is unfortunate we are a developed country a developing country there's so much we don't have we have a very long way to go but it is sad that we are uninterested in breaking away from the mental cage that we are in on one hand when something makes us uncomfortable we say it's not our culture but when when it does it's like we pick and choose what we want to support based on how it makes us feel ghana continues to mark time because we are not advancing in the kind of conversations we have we are we are having conversations about frivolous things we are not talking about why students you know like we have schools where people don't have equipment you know we have schools where students are performing very poorly but our fixation is on appearance it seems like for us we are more interested in people appearing to be intelligent appearing to fit into society than actually doing the work which is very 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 you know um unfortunate I I do hope that we elevate this conversation and through this we finally come to a conclusion when it comes to this hair uh, thing because all we are doing is raising a bunch of insecure a lot of you people your your arguments you are exposing your own self-hate I, I saw a woman come and write, well, in my time, I didn't like it, um, and and I didn't like it, but I did it because that was the law. Please, may we never have children that we have to push suffering on them because we went through the suffering. No, that you suffered doesn't mean your child should suffer too. Like, there's not, you suffered, it's okay. But the whole point of you suffering is to give your, your child a better life. 
that you experienced trauma and survived it doesn't mean another person should go through the same thing. So I really hope that we continue this conversation and GES takes a hard look. The biggest problem with us is in our mentality and it also starts with the type of education that we are giving. Because throughout our life, our identity is distorted. We don't know who we are. Again, this is not a campaign on everybody should go natural. While I would love for people to, I also respect people's choice. It is the fact that we keep taking the choice away from people and demonizing black hair. It, it's, you, you don't understand what you do. And you see, some of you people, your trauma, you have not dealt with your trauma. You are not honest with the trauma you have gone on. That's why you're arguing with so much, you know, anger. But it is traumatizing. There are people who were working. I know people who had scalp issues that had to cut their hair and suffered throughout secondary school. I know people who were, you know, um, dehumanized. Imagine you're walking through school and a teacher just takes scissors and cuts through your hair. Do you understand the de how dehumanizing that is? People of Ghana, is this who we want to be? That in 2020, we are still fighting against ourselves. Imagine this student refused into a Chimata school, gets an international, you know, scholarship and becomes one of the biggest, I don't know, tech guys. And how will we feel? You know? Like, it is sad. We have to also remember that our schools were built, a, a majority, especially these mission schools, were built on colonial doctrines. You see, I love when people talk about, you know, white people came, they brought us education, please. <laughs> they didn't bring you education. They tried to civilize you so that you could communicate. You were, you were barbarians and they were trying to civilize you and teach you their language. You are uninterested in learning, uninterested in learning your language to communicate. They needed you to fit in with them. Remember that. So it is up onto us to go back into who we were, figure ourselves out, find our identity, and fight to be the Africans that we are. Because at this point, all we are doing is chasing the idea, all we are doing is is chasing trying to be something we are not and this continues to hinder this continues to hinder our progress look when we have conversations like this and you reduce it to just hair it says i can cut off my hair today and nothing will happen to me but when someone forces me to take out this and tells me that it is not professional it makes me look ugly or unkempt immediately you have dehumanized my hair you have demonized my hair and i be i start to have an identity crisis all our conversation please again i, I know so many people are going to come in the comments and do this do this please just take all of that away for a moment Let's argue with reason. Compare schools where children have been given the freedom to own their identity. Now again, liberty comes with responsibility and reason. So I'm not advocating that allow students to do anything. But what is the reason? How does this hair situation perhaps the people who brought the law at that point, boarding schools had become popular. Students could not keep their hair or something. I, I don't want to believe, I, I can't, I've tried to find the reason where this came from. And I've, there've been so many mixed, you know, reasons, but none of them make any sense. Because with your hair, I braided my hair myself. I mean, even though it's the first time, I learned how to twist my own hair. I learned how to, because it's, it's a part of who I am. 
same way i shave my armpits same way i bath same way i brush my teeth it's part of my hygiene so if you go to even south african schools and other schools my niece is in secondary school right here in ghana her school she's allowed to keep her hair and i was just asking her like what do you do she said oh she just braids her hair for the, and she's able to wash it but some of the girls know how to do hair please let's not pretend that in boarding school even with short hair people say you don't have time for your books how? <laughs> that's why i know that a lot of you adults are dishonest because when i was in boarding school the time i had to brush my hair and scarf my hair and leave it overnight it is not what is preventing people from learning so that argument is just so and 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 when you're having these conversations you have to also understand something for a lot of people this self-hate has worked so you are fighting people who are comfortable with you no know, people when people make jokes about rastafarian because again the hair is seen as basa when you go to south africa and there are lawyers there are, there are doctors there are all kinds of people with okay i don't know about lawyer part but there are all kinds of corp, corporate um working men and women with dreadlocks there are newscasters with sakura you know This conversation is so multi-layered and so deep that is extremely and extremely sensitive. But I am always heartbroken when it is it is the, 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 the points people raise are really from a place of they are not interested in any progress. So I'm going to end this by stating again the rules. And regulations are written by man and they are subject to change and they are subject to be challenged what worked what worked 50 years ago might not work now there were countries where women were not allowed to drive some people even linked, linked women driving to them being demons some people say women driving meant do do they can't uh, they'll have miscarriages just so many arguments for why women shouldn't drive there were so many arguments for why women should not vote there were so many arguments for why women should not be employed there's so many arguments for why women should not be paid the same and we are still fighting it you cannot be there fighting for equity for inclusion for for or for equality and all of these things and be okay with the oppression of other people rules are written by man and they, are, they, should, they can be challenged. And if you challenge one rule and you win, it can be challenged again. Someone can come with a tangible reason why people should have, you know, short hair. And if in that argument, everybody agrees, it can be reverted back. So on the idea that it is the rule please no right here in nigeria just about two years ago a muslim woman was being prevented from the, the, the nigerian bar association refused to call her to the bar because of her hijab she argued and won people are going to win some they are going to lose some but the idea that we cannot challenge laws it can be challenged it can again this is purely about choice i'm not here advocating there are people who miss the whole message and you know i'm saying you know i'm naturalist no 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 i mean i've i've penned my hair before i've had short hair i've had you know blonde hair um and i'm purely natural when it comes to my hair but i've never been one i advocate for natural hair mostly because of the chemical you know when it comes to the hair um all that i've read about it but more than anything i advocate for natural hair mostly because for a lot of women the only reason why they refuse to go natural is because 
they feel less beautiful they look down on natural hair and they feel like it is not acceptable so i advocate for it but in advocating for natural hair i also respect people's rights to wear their hair the way they want to wear it i advocate because for many years this hairstyle has been looked down upon and seen as unprofessional and kept and dirty so this is not me saying you know i'm and again i know i'm going to get a lot of ignorant you know comments in there and then there are people who are just <laughs> there are people who just don't have sense there are people who are unreasonable this is me hoping that with people who can read write and have some small sense we can have an honest conversation rules and regulations can change two what is the reason what is the reason what is the correlation between hair and a person's intellect because i will tell you this even in my line of profession a lot of times people take one look at you and you're supposed to be, oh you're an actress so you know you're not supposed to have opinions or be smart or in intelligent because of all these prejudices so i fight against this by proving that i can i can club i can party i can write i can uh, produce i can do all of these things i'm a businesswoman as well because it's important for me to prove to young girls that you are not defined by what you look like you know you can be anything and still party um anyway i don't want to go on and on um but dear ges i also feel like you need to come out and state clearly we did not need this to happen in achimota we need to come out and state clearly that students should not be discriminated against because of their religion. Because there are several religions in, in Ghana. If you are saying all students to cut their hair, give us reason why. And if the, re the reason makes sense, everybody, not uh, people with... Um, Look, when you go to an army in the UK or America, everybody shaves off their hair. White, brown, black, everybody. But here, the laws are, they change depending on who knows who, what school, if the school is rich. You know, even people making arguments about go to another school, do you even understand the privilege it is? To be able to say i will not go to the school that means poor people know they don't have a choice in these conversations again the argument isn't to allow everybody to keep their hair or anything some people want short hair some people want long hair and of course i believe that there are hairstyles that suit a perfect you know i can't i wouldn't expect a student to be in class with you know weave on up to the floor but then what if the person is a, a, a Hindu, uh, not so forgive my ignorance, belongs to an Indian tribe or something, because I know there's a, I don't have all the facts, but they, are, they grow their hair. That's what you have been buying for your hair, right? That's their religion. You have to find reason that, okay, you have to keep it a certain way. It has to be packed, it has to be this, it has to be that. It's 2021 we can't be having this conversation like if we are still having this conversation because in a mumu be one who he ready in a in a na gana yadi ayadeng covid by you move in a did did the vaccine come from us why are we held bent on holding on to rules and a way of life that has not helped us in any way because if this worked people would not be arguing against this so much why are we hell bent on holding on to to lawyers wearing white wigs and everybody's afraid to challenge it because that is the way it is but if the way it is is not working and suiting our times why can't we challenge but i also believe that again it's in the kind of education that we have, and I'm, I'm going to try and conclude with this. 
the way we are educated in this country does not leave room for us to think outside the box it is true poor forget this is how it is you learn that this is the way of life there's nothing outside of it and so you follow it so we have not been brought up to to ask questions to challenge the status quo we've not been brought up to 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 want to see you know what else you know um is out there and which is extremely you know unfortunate so we need to raise a generation of people who ask we are timid we are afraid and all of this ties into our lack of identity in knowing who we are everything quite is right so you go to a negotiation table and you go and your hand is on, on your back because immediately you see a white person there's a problem and I know that it's not going to completely change in our lifetime. And I get frustrated in this conversation, but I also don't entirely give up because I am seeing a lot more girls confident about their hairstyles. A lot more girls wake up and say, Charlie, I don't care about my hair. I'm going to shave it all off and do a boy. But I love that it is their choice. When I see girls with short hair, I'm always like, girl, that's a confident girl because she's not tied to her hair and she does it because she has the freedom for some people their whole identity is their hair because throughout their life you have made them feel like it, 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 that is all they are about your hair makes you either intelligent or beautiful when it shouldn't be like that so um i i know the comments are going crazy and hopefully in all of this we will learn from each other but i'm going to continue talking about this and i'm going to try and reach gs and find out what it is because this thing this identity issue is really problematic really and some of you parents need to stop making these excuses about in a mini time in a your child is brushing their teeth it's part of it even with the short hair you still have to take hair to cut her hair so you cannot be pushing this responsibility like you know I, I i don't have you know time tea is part of basic you know hygiene anyway have a good evening guys um again i'm very passionate about this it's one of the things kinky matters is built on um <clears throat> I would have loved to have this conversation at a time where I was in a better headspace. Um, but, you know, there's so much going on right now. But I also felt like, you know, regardless of how I'm feeling, I needed to come out and say this because, I, like, the conversations I was seeing online were very, very problematic and unfortunate that we demonize blackness, we demonize traditionalism, we, we demonize, you know, dreadlocks and natural hair. Um, when we you you it shouldn't be like that we should be fighting for identity we should be fighting for freedom of expression we should be teaching young children um to learn to explore because you know when you are caged you are not interested in what else is out there we don't have enough innovators we don't have enough young people trying to build things because they've been confined to a certain way and just because we didn't have it good doesn't mean we should subject our children to the same treatment it, it, if it, it it affected you falsely uh, badly fight against it because this thing is beyond achimota school is beyond the school because it transcends into our workplaces and what is the reason why in workplaces natural hair is still a problem that means it is not about rules and regulation it is your disgust for natural hair it is your your misconception of natural hair and it's just it's, it's, have a good evening guys and hopefully we can have reasonable conversation i'll probably do this again bye and thank you all for tuning in um share this as many times as you can let's start this conversation i think it is the right time also for people who say i know so many amazing women from parliamentarians to vice presidential candidates to you know entrepreneurs who have natural hairstyles 
who are winning. Imagine if we have a society that did not permit them to wear their hair the way they do. And this is not just about women, even men go through it. Even men go through this in workplaces it's like if you have a hairstyle yeah then you are an artist we are not saying we should allow everybody to walk around with their hair looking like a peacock but we need to be reasonable about these these conversations um there are so many great examples of people who are winning with their natural hair there's so many great examples of people who are rastafarians and all of these people continue they contribute to our society your year of return no? All the people that were coming in, all the people you were doing all of this with, they didn't necessarily follow your code of conduct. There's something really wrong somewhere. Because when you na, we've not found someone to go on the moon. In T, Ekosi saying, why are we holding on to rules that are not progressing us? Have a good evening. All right, I am Lydia Fossen, and your question, no, no. Which is more? South Africa, Dr. Skra, I be a roster, sounds so na lawyers. And so Ghana had the the way BC a bit cano crano, now quiet the baby or ho. And there was your four in their first in and a church and some movie brain. No, now make a first seeker for gentleman capsules and a diamond war. We a bear ma, pebby no, no, need now now so. Bear my dear, so sorry near bones and money, bear me, war bear man, not to me say, walk all them, no, what's near boy, Juma, or bandom was sunny no. What's near boy, Juma, sir? And I will run and quiet the moon, bear ma, genau now so. Now, son, I beg now now so no, make a first seeker for gentleman capsules and a diamond war. A patch of oh, a man on it, Nasa Ope, be drew anoma, and we do a make for Eddie Amawa, a sicker for gentleman capsules, Bema, Titu, Nunumbi, I will say yes, full name, Tiwi, and our so pa. Sanso and a man on me can for anti sick capsules, and a dear ma, we are bar, Nasa, he fear ho, a hobby of crogena, Bema Bawa, what cat be the uncle, what cow soa, or modia, lazy anti sick capsules, Sanso and Maya near coffee chair, your menstruate, and a bimu yet seem, may I see dry a bomodian and no anti sick capsules, be beer, a bayer boko. And our sister with Jay Bray, now share me. You better follow me on Instagram, TikTok, social media, baby, a dino, a yama, Pupia, Memenedaba.